Hey there, comic book friends and fiends. It's Rob here in front of the Great Wall of Comics. And today, we'll be taking a look at the five top keys in my collection. All right, so there's a little challenge thing going around amongst some of the YouTubers uh, to, sh to show your top five key comic books in your collection. Now, this is a really difficult thing to do with, depending upon the size of your collection. And I had to think really long and hard about this. Uh, so, uh, first of all, Dragon Inc. Comics was the one who shouted me out, nominated me to participate there. Go ahead and go back and check out their um, video on their top five. Amazing, amazing uh, books that they showed. Um, and I think that uh, definitely all of them were worthy. Um, I probably not quite as fancy here with these books, uh, but I thought long and hard about it. I could go the top five from a value standpoint, the top five from a significant standpoint, what, what do you do? And finally, I decided to make it uh, a little bit easier on myself by chopping it down. And I decided I was going to cover one key from my collection for each era, Golden Age, Silver Age, Bronze Age, Copper, and Modern. So one book from, so I could only choose one key from each of those eras. And then I decided that that key was going to be the key that I felt was most significant to me. So maybe, so I may have more expensive books from that era. I may have what some people maybe consider bigger keys from that era, but to me and my personal collecting and how I collect, these are the top five books in my collection. So let's start with the newest books and we'll work our way back to the golden age. So for the modern age, um, it was uh, somewhat difficult, but beating out uh, Spider-Man 2099 and beating out, um, you know, some other, some, you know, Miles Morales stuff, I had to go with Batman Adventures 12, the first appearance of Harley Quinn in comics. Now, this is not her uh, main continuity appearance, but it's her first, uh, what's generally accepted as her first appearance in comics. There's some debate as to whether or not a comic book that had come with a vinyl record or something might be the first appearance or not. But that's a different story. But Harley Quinn, who, of course, started off just as a, you know, a little side character has just captivated people and become one of the biggest characters in the DC universe right now today you can argue that Harley Quinn would be the fourth pillar of their you know they have the whole they have their trinity but there's arguments say is when it comes to selling books and everything else that Harley Quinn could be that fourth pillar so Harley Quinn makes my uh, top key for the modern age all right rolling it back now to the copper age now, i know not everybody accepts the copper age as a true age or whatnot but i accept the atomic age as a separate age uh and uh well i also kind of accept the foil age but uh i think copper is of these other ages the most widely accepted so i went ahead and did that for the copper age it was tough there's some great books. I mean, you can see Wolverine kind of sitting solo, sitting there back there. There are so, uh, some other books that came out in that time. But um, I think that the uh, most, the big boy book from that era is the book that continues to be one of uh, generally the number one, and sometimes it's the number two, most slabbed comic book in existence. And that is Amazing Spider-Man 300. Uh, so this is a book that's shifted widely in uh, value recently, uh, gone, gone through the stratosphere, suffering down during this downturn, but still, uh, even though it's a very common book in reality and lots of slabbed copies in existence, there's no doubting the significance of Venom's first appearance, um, or where the symbiote becomes Venom, essentially, from the first full appearance, I should say, because 299 would be his first appearance which now they label in cameo. When I was a young kid, 299 was his first appearance. That's just how things change. But I won't argue. 300, 
huge book. Now, this is a very significant, if you don't know the story behind this copy, why does Rob only have an 8.5 and he doesn't have a higher book? I haven't gone out to buy a copy for myself. This book was belonged uh, to my brother-in-law, which really means that it belonged to my wife because my wife bought all the comics in the house and in her brother would steal some of them so he stole this one from her uh then he uh unfortunately he passed away uh at a young age in his 40s and uh well we were out at his funeral service and stuff my wife was gathering some of the stuff from papers because she was the executor of his estate and she grabbed this book and just threw it in a bunch of stuff she had showed it to me and i thought oh that's kind of cool um and then she just threw it in her stuff and brought it home with all these things and forgot about it because all these papers from the estate just got stuck aside nobody wants to deal with that stuff um, eventually several years later i'm sitting here on youtube during the pandemic she's going through some papers junk drawer and all of a sudden she comes around the corner she's like you're not going to believe what i just found and she brings out this book and of course it was raw and everything else and i was like oh my goodness gracious so she found an asm 300 in a junk drawer she put it there but she found it in the junk drawer uh, so that immediately went off, get pressed, cleaned, and there we go. 8.5. Super happy. Means a lot to us um, because of what it represents. All right. Bronze Age. This one was a tough one. A lot of great Bronze Age books out there. Um, but when it came down to it, um, I had to apply some of the... Um, thought process I do for a lot of things and that is how is that character transformative or else I always had Harley Quinn we had Venom oh my goodness we're doing um, a lot of villains here because this one is uh, this is Batman 251 this classic Neil Adams this is of course not only just a classic cover but this is the book that basically transforms or is associated with transforming the Joker from just the clown prince to a homicidal maniac uh, that we kind of know and how we think of the Joker today. Um, so that's really kind of the big thing is it's transformative of it. And of course, the Joker is the king of all rogues when it comes to Batman. Huge, huge character. Um, so there we go. Um, and I'm just now realizing that we have done three villains so far. Uh, this book here, this was, this isn't bad. This book's, um, it looks like I could, I could get it cleaned and pressed. It might get a little bit, but it has a tear on the, on the cover right there. And a couple significant spine ticks, but anyways, I'm still happy. That's going to get redone at some point. Cause this is an old slab. Um, but for now, there we go. Batman. 251. That's number three. That was our Bronze Age. Silver Age. Again, lots of options here. Um, most of them for me are Spider-Man because you guys know Silver Age. I collect a ton of Silver Age. Um, but uh, when it came down to it, again, <laughs> I guess I'm just I'm on a roll when it comes to villains. That's evil guys. Uh only one book really jumped out to me beyond all others, and that is Amazing Spider-Man issue 14, the first appearance of the Green Goblin. Like the Joker, Green Goblin is, he's Spider-Man's number one rogues gallery and spider-man like batman has one of the best rogues galleries in all of comics so when you take a great rogues gallery and you take the guy who's at the top of that list i don't think there's any debate whether or not green goblin is at the top of that so the first appearance of green goblin comes in there uh without a doubt is also the first meeting of the hulk and spider-man now you know i was the only debate i had on this really was uh, potentially issue 31, which people wouldn't normally think is that way, but I, but it, it's got some key first appearances in there with Gwen Stacy and, and um, uh, Harry Osborn and uh, um, Professor uh, Miles um, Warren all make their first appearances in that book. And they, tr they really affect Spider-Man stories for years to come, but Green Goblin 
affects them more than any of that simply because of what happens to Gwen Stacy at his hands and how that has just not only affected Spider-Man, you know, going ahead and being married to Mary Jane, how it's affected the back of his mind all the time, how he has thought the guilt he's carried of not being able to save her. So super important book there. Okay, so that brings us to the last book in the, in the uh, that we're going to talk about today, and that's from my Golden Age uh, book. And this one uh, was difficult. Lots of great Golden Age books in my collection. None of them that are really super duper mega keys, to be honest. Um, I Most of my Golden Age collection is done on a budget, so I pick up a lot of cover buys or a lot of um, niche books. But there are some significant ones. You know, we have uh, some of them you see here with the first appearance of Adam Strange. We got the Out of This World, this robot covers the first appearance of Crom the Barbarian, Early Mystery in Space, and Planet Comics. There's some great stuff up there. But Guys, if you watch my channel, you know I'm big into the sci-fi. Um, and so, and when it comes to sci-fi, one of the biggest sci-fi heroes of all is Flash Gordon. So this is Four Color, issue 173. Now, what makes this book a key and significant is that this is the very first original stories written for the comic books everything prior to this issue is reprints from the daily comics or collected from daily comics and put republished this is the first original story uh for and it's introducing for the first time flash gordon comics especially written and drawn for this book so this is phenomenal uh, to me, this is huge. I was very happy to get this. I bought this raw. I was super happy to get this uh, come back in a 5 uh, Here you go. You see the backside here. Some of the book going all the way to the last page. But some of that great, great cover. So there you go. All right, guys. Uh, don't mind. Hit that like button. I really appreciate it. It helps everything get out there in front of more people. Comics Curing Cancer, as you know, this channel donates all the proceeds to Comics Curing Cancer, so it really helps. Um, let me know, what did you guys think here? Uh, which, which was your favorite of these five keys? If you could have one, you could say, Rob, give me that key. Which one of those five are you taking? I'm curious. Um, I'd like to nominate... Uh, three people for this challenge. Um, I'm going to nominate first uh, Justin Birch Letters. Uh, and second, I'm going to nominate Comic Journey. And the last is going to be uh, Scott from Hoarder's Hide. Guys, I hope that you'll uh, participate because I'd love to see your five big keys from your collection. Everyone else, until next time, man. Uh, collect what you want. Don't listen to anybody, especially me. I mean, I'm just a fat man with a fat stack of comics and a fat opinion. Thanks for watching.